Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Sustainable Long-Term Investments and Competitive European Industry Integrity Event on the EU Taxonomy. But before starting, let me guide you through the housekeeping rules. The event is recorded and the link will be shared afterwards. All attendees are muted, but if you have questions or comments, you can write them in the questions chat. When writing your question, please write down the name of your organization. All data will be on the record. You will find a copy of the agenda and speaker's bio in your handout section. And now, without further ado, I will hand over to Amiti Carvalho for the opening remarks. Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Welcome to another event of the Intergroup Sustainable Long-Term Investments and Competitive European Industry. I'm one of the co-chairs of this intergroup together with my colleagues, Dominique Riquet and Simona Bonafé. As you might all know, the intergroup is a non-official body of the European Parliament that tries to complement the discussions taking place in the parliamentary committees. In certain way, we, uh, our objective is to give a more holistic and horizontal um, view of the, the subjects that we discuss in the committees. In our case, uh, it is organized as a forum to debate about the interlinkage between sustainable and long-term investment needs to implement the union policies and the challenge for the European industry to undergo the twin transition uh, while remaining competitive and build resilience. Today, the event is organized by Orgalim, uh, which is one of the industrial partners of the intergroup and uh, has a special place in the running of the intergroup, together with the European Construction e Equipment Organization. Orgalim is the soul of the secretariat of our intergroup, and it's a pleasure for me to say that it's an honor to have them on the board uh, with such a proactive attitude. Today we have to discuss for a, a very important topic, which is the EU taxonomy legislation. We have understood that sustainable finance is at the heart of the union's agenda and the Green Deal achievements will depend very much for, from a successful implementation of the rules dedicated to the investments in the different sectors. The EU taxonomy regulation sets science-based indicators and uh, thresholds about what is to consider a green investment product. It is aimed at providing criteria that should be as uniform as possible in order to increase transparency, consistency and impact of multiple sectors and activities. This way, taxonomy could lead to incentivize financial flows towards economy sectors that are more in line with the climate change and the environmental objectives. Consider the huge impact that such a classification has, it is clear that it must properly designed and implemented. We know how the matter was debated in the different institutions, and in my opinion, the debate is far from being over especially considering the recent developments in terms of global energy and su supply chains uh, due to the events in Ukraine. So Orgalim and its industries are providers of technologies for the green transition and are therefore essential in decarbonizing the uh, other industries. As many of the other industries and economic sectors it has certainly a big interest of having the clear situation in terms of legal certainty in a way to be able to contribute to the necessary investments for the green and digital transition. The tax on me regulation established six environmental objectives, climate change mitigation, climate change adaptation, the sustainable use and the protection of water and marine resources, the transformation to a circular economy, pollution prevention and control, and the protection and restoration of biodiversity ecosystems. 
and the Commission has to come up with the actual list of those activities that are considered sustainable according to the criteria referenced to these topics. One first and extensively discussed also in the European Parliament Delegated Act uh, was on climate change adaptation and mitigation objectives and was approved last year and is now in place. The second was due to be adopted last year, but as you know, the Parliament and the Council weren't convinced of it, and the Commission decided to further analyze its content and its impact. It is probably uh, a news from some of you, maybe not for some others, but uh, we look forward to listen from Mr. Arg that uh, will uh, confirm or not, but we had the news that yesterday the Commission adopted uh, and published a second version of that Delegated Act. The news arrived to the Parliament yesterday evening and I cannot obviously comment on the content of it. We didn't have the enough time to, to, to evaluate the content, but we'll probably raise extensive debates, especially in light of what is now happening in the energy sector due to the uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia. So this event is very, very timely. As you are aware, the, the sad events that is happening in Ukraine are having a huge impact on the global markets and in the energy sector in particular. Today, we are very honored that we have the chance to debate on these issues with uh, Mr. Marcel Ag, uh, I could say a good friend for a long time, uh, former colleague in the European Commission, uh, and the other, our distinguished guests from industry, NGOs, and other institutions. It will be important to start understanding how to ensure that these technical acts catalyze the right investments in those technologies that we need to be successful in the green and digital transition plans. Given the huge number of, of activities that needs to be assessed and time pressure due to the climate urgency, the Commission has to ensure that the criteria are implemented proportionate and can adjust to the pace of innovation, science and global changes due to an expected event. And we had several unexpected, very serious events in the recent past from COVID to war. I also asked the Commission to pay attention not to over-regulate for the sake of our micro and SMEs enterprises. We really need to help them in this difficult time. I leave the floor to our moderator, Andreas Brunskar, who will then introduce our keynote speakers and will set the tone of our discussion. Thank you for the opportunity and I thank all and I wish you a fruitful debate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Maria, for, for, for hosting, for you, obviously, all the members of the intergroup, this important intergroup, to host this event today on, on sustainable finance and the taxonomy. Um, my name is Andreas Brunskart, and I'll, I'll be taking over now, moderating the rest of the program. But, but before doing that, I, I do want to say, on behalf of Orkelin, uh, thank you very much, not just for hosting the event today, but also for facilitating discussion cross committee cross party lines on important uh, topics that are key for the finance financing gaps or financing needs i should say and competitiveness of european industry so with that thank you very much um, for 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 setting setting out uh, the program for today my name is Andreas Brunskard and I uh, work for the Confederation of Danish Industry. Um, but more importantly, I think for this conversation, I'm, also, I'm representing Orkelim uh, in the platform on sustainable finance as a member there. Uh, the platform is giving advice to the Commission on the technical content of the taxonomy. And, and in this capacity, I could say that I've I've spent quite a bit of bit time uh, on the taxonomy working with this topic for the last uh, 18 um, months. Um, 
Let's turn to the program today. Uh, the taxonomy is, 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 is a vast and complex uh, um, a new instrument proposed by the Commission. But what we want to talk about today is, is, the, is the way in which the taxonomy can help incentivize the enablers of the green tech uh, transition. I think we all recognize that the high impact sectors, obviously, they will need to transition whether that's in climate or in other environmental goals. Um, but I also think we have to, I think a lot of people do recognize that for these high impact sectors to transition, this will only take place, this will only happen if we have the technology, the innovation and the technology, green tech, et cetera, that will allow the energy sector, the energy efficient sector, energy, uh, high energy efficient sectors in industry to transition. Um, and these are what we call enabling technologies. And today we will discuss how to ensure that, or at least what we want to uh, shed light on, how we, we can ensure that the taxonomy rightful, rightfully recognize the role that these enabling technology has for, for in the taxonomy and for the green transition. Um, I hope also that we can have a discussion more broadly on the expected impact of the taxonomy in the capital market. What does it mean to be an SME? What does it mean to be a big company in this context? What's the implication of being inside the taxonomy? Some sectors are, but there are still quite a few sectors that are not in the taxonomies yet. What's the implication of that? And then also, of course, nothing is for free. There's also some burdens associated, at least from a company perspective with the taxonomy, the reporting side of the taxonomy. How do we handle this to make it as agile and easy for companies to, to, to get started with reporting based on the taxonomy. For today's program, we have first two distinguished uh, keynote speakers that I will introduce shortly. After that, we will go into a moderated discussion with the two keynote speakers will actually join in, in the panel discussion and, and, and three more panelists will, will join in. But I'll introduce them all properly later on in the program. But for now, I'll, I'll introduce the two keynote speakers, Marcel Haig, Director for Horizontal Policies at DG FISMA at the Commission. Obviously, DG FISMA is, is quite key in this discussion as they are the key DG uh, for, for, the, uh, for the, the work, the Commission's work on the taxonomy. And after Marcel, I'll, we will have Melte Logan, Director General of Ogelim, of course, European's technology industry. But I think first now, without further ado, Marcel, I'll, I'll hand it over to you and then we'll come back to you shortly, Melte. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Rasha. Thank you, uh, thank you, Andreas. Um, um, and, um, and, and good morning uh, to all. Um, the main objective of the uh, sustainable finance framework uh, of the European Union is to uh, channel private financial flows into relevant economic activities. And we are doing this with a clear framework, which includes the EU taxonomy, the sustainable finance disclosures regulation, and the recently proposed European Green, Green Bond Standard and Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive which are still uh, under scrutiny and discussion um, uh, by the um, uh, EU co-legislators. Um, as Grasha Cavallo uh, already explained, the EU taxonomy is a green classification system that translates the EU's climate and environmental objectives into criteria for specific economic activities for private investment purposes. It recognizes as green or environmentally sustainable those economic activities that make a substantial contribution to at least one of the EU's climate and environmental objectives, while at the same time not significantly harming any of these objectives and meeting minimum social safeguards. The Taxonomy Delegated Acts establish clear criteria for activities to define what it means to make a substantial contribution and what it means to do no significant harm. It is a transparency and comparability tool that will introduce mandatory disclosure obligations on large companies and investors requiring them to disclose their share 
of taxonomy aligned activities. But I think it is also important to, um, to be clear about what the taxonomy is not. Investors will always be free to choose what to invest in. The EU taxonomy is not a mand mandatory list of economic activities for investors to invest in. Nor does it set mandatory requirements on environmental performance for companies or fin for financial products. However, it is expected that over time, the EU taxonomy will be an enabler of change and encourage a transition towards sustainability. Economic activities that are not recognized by the EU taxonomy delegated acts as substantially contributing to one of the EU's climate and environmental objectives are not necessarily environmentally harmful or unsustainable. And not all activities that can make a substantial contribution to the environmental objectives are yet part of the EU taxonomy delegated acts. Investment in activities not covered by the EU taxonomy are still possible and will continue. Delegated acts are living documents that will be added over time and updated as necessary. So why do we think we need the EU taxonomy? We believe that we need uh, reliable tools to support companies in the transition to climate neutrality and towards a sustainable economy. The EU taxonomy is one such tool translating the climate and environmental objectives into clear criteria to create a common language around green activities. It creates a frame of reference for investors and companies. It will support companies in their efforts to plan and finance their transition, help mitigate market fragmentation, protect against greenwashing, and accelerate financing of those projects that are already sustainable and those in transition to deliver on the objectives of the European Green Deal. It is an important element of a much broader sustainable finance framework that will deliver a complete toolkit for financing the transition. The added value of the EU taxonomy is that it can help scale up investment in green projects that are necessary to implement the European Green Deal. The EU taxonomy is a cornerstone of um, the EU's sustainable finance agenda. Uh, since it provides clear definitions for economic activities that are in line with EU climate and environmental goals. By using the EU taxonomy, companies can give clear signals to investors on the steps that they are taking to become more sustainable. With this, the taxonomy helps companies to plan the transition with clear parameters and it helps investors provide financing where it, where it is most needed, enabling us to reach global climate and broader environmental goals. The Climate Delegated Act entered into force on the 1st of January 2022. It lays down the technical screening criteria for over 80 economic activities that can make a substantial contribution to climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation. Our efforts are now focused on the Environmental Delegated Act uh, that will set out the technical screening criteria for the remaining four environmental objectives under the EU taxonomy. Uh, pollution, water and marine resources, the transition to our, uh, towards a uh, circular economy, and biodiversity and ecosystems. The development of the taxonomy criteria is based on advice from external experts from the public and private sectors and underpinned by scientific evidence and following a transparent process with the involvement of stakeholders. The Platform on Sustainable Finance, the Commission's independent expert group, has been working on its recommendations for these activities, uh, for these uh, technical screening criteria for more than a year now. Their work on the technical screening criteria was driven by three principles, namely, the criteria had to be science-based, they had to be based on international agreements where they exist, and they, had, they have to reflect the EU's response to international agreements and or the EU's leadership on an objective. The platform is currently finalizing its recommendations. The platform's final report will cover a large number of activities in sectors 
such as agriculture and fishing, manufacturing, energy, civil engineering, buildings, disaster risk management, transport, restoration and remediation, tourism, water supply, sewage and waste management. Furthermore, the platform is, is planning to publish a second batch of criteria for additional activities in, uh, later in the year. While the recommendations of the platform uh, are a valuable input for the Commission, at the same time, they do not represent the Commission's position and they do not prejudge final policy outcomes. The Commission will um, analyze the final report in view of the preparation of the Delegated Act on the four environmental objectives as required by the taxonomy regulation. On this basis, the Commission will make its own assessment of the technical screening criteria and will publicly consult on uh, the draft Delegated Act. Let me uh, say in conclusion that with the adoption of this Delegated Act, the EU taxonomy will provide clear criteria on all six climate uh, and environmental objectives and thus facilitate investment in uh, Europe's uh, sustainable future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Marcel, for, for very clearly laying out the, the sort of raison d'etre of the, of the taxonomy. Um, and I think we all agree here that, that we need private investment, right? There is a massive financial investment gap. So we need the financial markets to really engage in, in the sustainability agenda. And, and, and the taxonomy is the principal tool for, for that. So thank you very much for very clearly laying out what the taxonomy is. Uh, and, and, and the work ongoing also the, in, in relation to, to the platform. Uh, allow me now to, and, and we'll, we'll see you again a bit later uh, as part as the, 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 the panel discussion, but, but let's now turn to, to Mel de Lohan, Lohan uh, Director General of Orgelim. Um And Melte, I, I hope that in your keynote, I mean, obviously you address and represent some of the technologies and some of the industries that are not directly covered by the taxonomy because those industries are not heavy polluters, does not have a high impact on the environmental um, in, environment, but they are key. They are the key enablers for the green transition in those sectors that need to transition. And I think that is a very interesting uh, aspect and, and I'm sure you will touch upon some of these issues. Um, but anyway, without further ado, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andreas, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, in particular, MEP Carvalho, for your initiative. Uh, it's a pleasure to be joining this important discussion this morning. We're living through an alarming period, and I think it reminds us that a lot of the things that we hold dear in Europe are precarious. Our security, our prosperity, and our ability to achieve the groundbreaking environmental, climate, and energy goals that we have set. Let me start by saying that we in Orgalim stand fully behind the sanctions that Europe has imposed on Russia. From day one, we have said we support our political leaders in taking the measures that are needed. And it is clear that we are now facing a new reality since the Russian invasion of Ukraine three weeks ago. On the one hand, Europe's climate and energy transition has become even more urgent than it was before. On the other hand, we are facing a new profound shock to Europe's economy and to manufacturing SMEs in particular for the second time in two years. And while we are still recovering from the first shock. So any major regulatory reform needs to be mindful of how precarious the situation is. In this context, Europe's work on a taxonomy for sustainable finance could not be more crucial. And if the stakes for getting this right were high before, they are enormous now. 
Europe cannot afford to get it wrong. And unfortunately, despite the heavy involvement of Orgalim and of course many other partners from the industry and beyond, we are not there yet. So this event is really timely and I appreciate um, the involvement of the Parliament and the interest also of MEP Carvalho uh, in moving this conversation forward. What I want to talk about is the critical enabling technologies which are needed for Europe's green and climate transition and which currently would be penalized by the sustainable finance framework because they have been left out. And I want to talk about some examples of what I mean by enabling, just to make this a bit more intuitive. Take electric motors. There are about 8 billion electric motors in use in the EU today, consuming nearly half of all the electricity the EU produces. They are everywhere. They are used in heating and ventilation and cooling of buildings. They are used in every production line in every industry across the country. They are used for operating wind power. They are used for powering cars, buses, bikes, washing machines, vacuum cleaners, the name. Altogether, it's estimated that by using more energy efficient electric motors, we can achieve savings of 110 terawatt hours or 40 million tons of avoided CO2 emissions in Europe every year through 2030. But electric motors are not currently identified in the taxonomy as substantially contributing to climate change mitigation or other things. Take digital technologies, for example, the so-called digital twin. Many in our audience will be familiar with that. Using a digital twin in industrial applications can radically improve energy efficiency and can contribute to a more circular economy because it enables preventive maintenance, it cuts down on waste, and it prolongs the life cycle of the assets. And yet, digital twin technologies are not in the taxonomy today. Or take the transition to the circular economy to reduce waste in line with the EU Circular Economy Action Plan. Waste sorting and recycling is obviously an important activity. And to achieve our goals, we need a massive uptake of the machines and the components such as sensors which are required for sorting and recycling waste. But, you guessed it, they are not today in the taxonomy and so they are not considered sustainable for investment. And all of this is just the tip of the iceberg. There is a whole range of industrial automation technology, machinery, equipment, and digital technologies that enable industrial decarbonization and that are not yet fully recognized in the current economy. I'm sure that we all agree that without, without massively accelerating the uptake of these technologies and hundreds more like them, we simply will not achieve the ambitious goals that we set. Industry accounts for 32% of energy use. A study by our member in Germany, the BDMA and BCG, has estimated that automation equipment technologies already available today can prevent more than 80% of these greenhouse gas emissions from the industry. More than 80%. And they will also significantly decrease the overall energy use, which again is so important in this, in this current environment. But a lot of these technologies are not yet in the market because the business case is not yet there. And this is exactly where the taxonomy currently falls from. There's plenty of focus for all the right reasons on the final applications and industrial uses. But there is not nearly enough focus today on the enabling technologies that will make it all happen. And let's be clear, if these technologies are not included in the final taxonomy, it will deal a heavy blow. Products, technologies that are not in, will suffer from the deteriorating financial conditions that they face in the markets. And this is happening already. Goldman Sachs has recently advised that, and I quote, 
we are seeing rising pressure on corporates and investors to follow the taxonomy, which has led to growing adoption that in turn will drive significant impacts for capital allocation. End of quote. So the good news is the taxonomy is working. The bad news is it is already steering funds away from some of these advanced industrial technologies, which are so critical for the green transition. And with the double crisis that we need to overcome, first COVID, now the fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we cannot absorb the serious competitive disadvantage this would put us in. Ironically, these technologies are also exactly where Europe currently has undisputed global leadership. Many of the best in class companies and technologies are made here in Europe. And the vast majority of those making them are smaller companies than SMEs. So not only is the current taxonomy putting at risk our green transition, but it is also jeopardizing one of the most important opportunities for Europe's SMEs to overcome the current economic shock and to generate our future growth and prosperity. So I'm really worried that Europe, unless we get this right, would be handing other major economies the future growth, the future prosperity stemming from the green economy on a silver planet. So how can this be fixed? And you know, I look forward to the discussion with Marcel in a moment, because of course, first, we encourage the Commission to continue expanding the list of activities that contribute to the climate and environmental objectives. And in particular, this needs to include the manufacturing activities that are not addressed so far, such as those for the decarbonization of industry, technologies enabling a circular economy, water protection, pollution prevention. This should all be reflected in the next version of the criteria and in the forthcoming delegated needs. And these future criteria, which the Commission defines, need to be implementable, especially for the SMEs. If the companies that are producing these technologies required for sustainability cannot fulfill the criteria because they are too complex, too restrictive, too expensive, then in practice, the taxonomy would be working against its own objective. What I'm recommending here should not be controversial. I don't think there is a strategic disagreement about the role that these technologies have to play. So why is that not being addressed? I think we need to overcome some of the political obstacles. And therefore, I very much welcome the MEP's timely engagement on this file um, as the Commission is finalizing the next round of the delegated funds. And as there are also many national experts listening to our debate today, I call on the member states to be really actively engaged in this process with the co-legislators through the member state expert group on sustainable finance. We need your help so that the taxonomy takes full advantage of an alien technology. If we don't manage to fix this, I'm afraid that it would mean Europe will not be able to meet its ambitious climate and environmental goals. And I fear it would seriously undermine all European industries' competitiveness and ability to it. So to maintain Europe's leadership in sustainable technologies on the global stage, companies and SMEs in particular need access to public and private capital under favorable terms. And the time to get this right is now. So let us ensure that the motor required for Europe's green transition is running at maximum capacity. And let us safeguard Europe's ability to lead this industrial transformation. The new jobs, new growth, prosperity that will come with it are ours for the day. Orgalim is fully mobilized and we call on the Commission and all the policymakers and partners involved to work with us. Thank you. Thank you very much in, in indeed, Melda. Um, I thought you very clearly laid out the, the importance of enabling technologies and I, I very much appreciate it also making it concrete. What, what technologies are we talking about? And, and it, it does seem pretty evident that these, these, these technologies have and should have a, 
uh, a key role also in the context of, of the taxonomy. Also notice that you say that the taxonomy works, the, the investors are now contacting all the big companies, like what, what, what's your expected uh, taxonomy score, right? And, and I guess here, the upcoming work of the commission and the platform for that regard um, on, on, on calibrating the taxonomy in technical terms correctly, also making sure that we need to get these technologies in. And I might on, just throw in a point here that the taxonomy regulation actually provides a legal base for recognizing enabling technologies as taxonomy aligned. And in fact, the co-legislator, when, when they negotiated the taxonomy regulation, they actually expanded that legal scope. So I think we have the, 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 the technology argument in place, the, the financing argument is there, but the legal argument is also there to do it. So I agree with you, there is, there is no stopping us. We should get this, get this right now. Thank you very much, Maldi. Let's now turn to the next part of the, of the program. The panel discussion um, and I'm very pleased also that you are able to join in on that part. So aside from Marcel and Malta that we already heard from, uh, I will now introduce the three remaining um, panelists. Um, I'm very pleased to, to welcome uh, Carl Hoiskin, Chairman and of the Supervisory Board of Harvard Hydraulic and equally important, uh, the President of VDMA, the German mechanical engineering industry. Equally, I'm pleased to welcome Olivier Lefloc, Vice President for Carbon Neutrality at the French company Le Grand. And last but not least, Chiara Martinella, Ma Ma Martinelli, sorry, Director for uh, Climate Action Network or CAN Europe. Um, very important also to have you on board and, and also get the perspective from, from the NGOs. So welcome to all of you. I think I'll start with, with you, Carl. Um, the taxonomy, obviously, we talked about this already, sets out reporting obligations for large companies to begin with listed companies with more than 500 um, employees. But from an SME perspective, and I guess I know you organize a lot of SMEs in, in VDMA, what opportunities and, and, and challenge, challenges do, do you foresee from, from some sort of an SME point of view in regards to, to the taxonomy and the sustainable finance agenda? Okay, thanks, uh, Andreas, um, uh, for letting me um, participate here um, and a warm welcome um, to all of you. Um, in order to, to, to paint a little bit the background um, picture, um, the machine building industry or the mechanical engineering industry, not just in Germany, but also in, in Italy, uh, in Spain, um, in the Netherlands, um, is very much uh, an industry um, of uh, medium-sized um, businesses. Um, example, given the 3,000, roughly 3,300 member companies that we have in uh, VDMA, um, the average size is just between um, uh, 180 to 250 uh, um, employees. At the same time, uh, these companies have an export uh, rate of 80% uh, or more. Um, so we see relatively small or medium-sized businesses um, in a very complex uh, business model. So they, they have to cope with a lot of global influences um, due to the international um, character of their businesses. Um, that's one aspect. The other aspect is that um, almost, almost all technologies that are represented within VDMA, um, we have 36 different machine groups, um, uh, for example, given agricultural equipment, construction equipment, plastic machinery. So these are just three out of 36. Um, so you recognize they're very, very different uh, kind of machines that are organized um, in our association. Almost all of those um, uh, contribute um, um, to the big transformation that is already going on and that we still have um, um, ahead of us. There is hardly, there is hardly any path uh, um, to, to the generation, distribution and consumption um, of energy or um, any kind of mobility, whether we talk about hydrogen-driven mobility or um, battery-driven electric mobility, uh, mobility, which is working without uh, components um, and machines um, of our industry. Nothing works without such machines. So this is why the term um, enabling technology very much uh, fits or very well fits 
um, to what we are doing um, and what many of these companies are doing. So um, the vast majority um, of member companies, of owners, uh, managers, and also employees um, perceive um, the big transformation um, to manage um, climate change, um, not just as a necessary challenge for society, but also as a big chance uh, for technology and innovation-driven um, businesses um, to build a new or enlarged uh, business model and uh, to, to generate um, technological solutions that are again um, ahead um, of competitors um, maybe in other parts of the world and in our industry. So this is the big chance. The, the chance is to generate um, technologies that make the transformation possible and through those new technologies um, gain market share and um, even profit uh, from the transformation as the society is profiting um, from such technologies. Um, the taxonomy at this point in time um, is not part of this big chance. Um, from our perspective, um, it's a roadblock. And it is a roadblock because out of these 36 um, technologies that, that we represent, and it was in these 36, you always have different technologies again, so it's much more, the, the, the complexity, the variety is much higher. None is uh, at this point in time um, part of the taxonomy, none. So um, I give you an example of the company that I represent. We, we manufacture hydraulics. That's a technology to, to transmit uh, mechanical power and control um, heavy loads. Um, a typical example um, is a hydraulic power pack that controls um, the braking functions in a wind turbine and that controls the angle um, of the blades uh, when the turbine is turning in order to adapt to wind speed and optimize uh, the efficiency of such a wind uh, turbine. So to make such a wind turbine uh, um, highly efficient uh, in delivering renewable energy, um, hydraulic power units um, are uh, required. However, today, a hydraulic power unit is not part of the taxonomy. So now we could go um, along the path and, and come forward with a life cycle analysis and a third party uh, um, and the third party certificate. Um, it's undoable. Um, if you look at the technical criteria as it is per now, they are not applicable um, um, to machine or to engineering, to mechanical engineering uh, technologies. And if I make a life cycle analysis for one product group, let me mention that my company alone, we are having 80 different product groups. And in each product group, we have between 15 to um, 40 different products. So we talk about hundreds of different products in tens of thousands of different versions in many, many applications. It is virtually undoable to come forward with third-party certificates and lifecycle analysis for this kind of business. Um, it will take years. It creates a huge bureaucracy. And by the way, it also um, um, generates cost. But as a matter of fact, um, the taxonomy as it is now is slowing down the transformation as it is slowing down um, our technologies. Marcel Haag um, um, has mentioned that we should not worry too much um, about, about the impact of the taxonomy at this point in time, um, but I do not think um, that this is really the case. Uh, Malte has already mentioned uh, the Goldman Sachs uh, um, analysis, uh, and we already see in many discussions with the financial sector that the financial sector is really keen on taking on um, taxonomy as a, as a catalog, basically, where you can pick and choose um, and apply uh, financing conditions. So that means that already today, uh, we see a trend uh, that companies or products or applications, which are not part of the taxonomy, will have a disadvantage at the financing conditions or in an extreme case, even be um, excluded uh, from certain uh, sources of uh, financing. So we really see uh, an urgent need uh, to make sustainable finance do what it is supposed to do. And I think we all agree on the objective. Um, we see an urgent need uh, to rework uh, the technical criteria and the taxonomy um, itself in order to turn a challenge into a real chance. Thank you at this moment in time. Thank you very, thank you very much, Carl. And we'll come back to you also later on. Um... I just couldn't help but think that we call this uh, this uh, event today incentivizing enablers for the green transition. And 
here I hear you saying a roadblock, basically for most of the sectors that you are representing. Um, and I guess this being inside or outside the taxonomy uh, is 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 key is of course key importance. And then the compliance you mentioned life cycle assessment there very costly. I think that that is is valid across the board, but particularly for for those smaller uh, companies that down the road will be also covered by the reporting obligation. That is a, that is a very key point. Um, Olivier, let me now turn to you. Um, basically asking you the same question, but but from from not an SME perspective, but but from a larger company perspective, what are the what are the opportunities here? What are the challenges? Is this something that you can use strategically in your business development, in your your access to finance? Um, enlighten us on that, please. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Andrea. Uh, good morning, and thanks a lot for having me in this uh, in this panel. Okay, let me start with the opportunities of taxonomy. The main interest of taxonomy is to provide a uniform, standardized framework uh, for our companies communicating to stakeholders so that they understand to which extent and how our companies are contributing to environmental objectives. Another interest is also that it's facilitating uh, financing of such green activities. Now, if I move to challenges, the main challenge, as highlighted by, uh, by Carl, is the fact that the Climate Delegated Act is incomplete, incomplete in terms of activities. We have significant positively contributing parts of our industries for which we can demonstrate the positive contribution, which have been missed out. Let me give you, for instance, two examples. Uh, energy efficiency products and solutions for data centers are not in the taxonomy. Industry automation products are not in the taxonomy either. So the fact that those activities are not considered is generating a significant distortion for stakeholders to apprehend the role of companies to climate objectives. I also concur with Carl on another challenge with, which lies on the open criteria chapter, such as, for instance, the chapter 3.6, which is related to manufacturing, manufacturing of uh, other low carbon technologies. This chapter, for instance, requires conditions that are so demanding that they are impossible to comply with and potentially also very expensive. Third challenge is that we can also question the interest of some indicators and their balance of cost versus benefit. Uh, let me, for instance, highlight this with the OPEX KPI. OPEX KPI is, is mixing up different types of expenses such as maintenance expenses, short-term leases, as well as non-capitalized R&D expenses. Those different types of expenses have very little to do one with another. As a consequence, it will be very difficult for stakeholders to understand and interpret this indicator. Practically, we can question the use of this indicator. Another question lies also with the CAPEX KPI. Same here, the CAPEX KPI is a sum of various types of investment, such as, such as investing in companies, acquiring companies, investing in CAPEX, which are green by nature, investing into R&D CAPEX, as well as manufacturing CAPEX. So we can see that it's very large and, and very different from one, one from another. Which means that for stakeholders, the consolidation of this KPI, this consolidated KPI, will be extremely difficult to, uh, to interpret. In addition, on the, on the CAPEX KPI, 
this indicator requires an analysis at a very granular level, uh, which means that it's going to be extremely difficult. It will generate, it will require very large efforts and for a potentially, uh, let's say, limited interest. Uh, so those are the main opportunities and challenges for, uh, for companies in our industry. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Olivier. Um, and I hear you again saying it's an issue that not everything is in right now. Um, and rightly so, you mentioned that in, in, the, in the Climate Delegated Act, there is this open list or open-ended, I think it's called Other Low Carbon Technologies 0.3.6, but the requirements there uh, are quite, quite cumbersome and almost impossible to, to document. Um, also here, another point, which I echo the, the, the companies that I work with in Denmark, the, 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 the challenges around uh, particularly OPICs, the KPI on, on OPICs, very difficult. And I have not heard one company or two companies interpreting sort of the way that they do it the same way. So I think there is going to be, it's not really going to be comparison, those KPIs on OPICs in particular, but, but, but I, I trust that the commission will come out with more ad guidance and advice to, to how to, 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 to address in more practical term the, the, the KPIs uh, and the whole delegated act on, on Article 8, the reporting side. But thank you very much for, for clearly laying out opportunities, but also a few concerns. Um, Chiara, now, now uh, moving to you, um, coming in to this conversation, not from an industry point of view, but, but, but from an NGO point of view. And I think this is, is, is equally as important and is also in the platform on sustainable finance, where I'm a member, there's an equal, equal representation. So, so a strong sort of voice in this sustainable finance uh, debate as well. Um, I would be very interested in, in, in hearing your perspective on, on this discussion on on enabling technologies in the in the taxonomy i think we all recognize the opportunities but but are there also risk here and are there some concerns that should also be addressed um, your views on that would be very interesting to to hear thank you thank you thank you very much uh, and first of all thank you for having us here as you said uh, i'm from climate action network europe and we represent more than 180 organizations civil society organizations across europe and as you said, this is, uh, uh, I would say, is a matter of societal transformation. So I think the, the point of being all together discussing this, I think it's uh, it's crucial. We do need uh, to create more spaces for that. And uh, I also really thank you for the invitation in this timely uh, moment where uh, important discussions are, are going to happen, especially in the Euro European Parliament around the, the EU taxonomy. Uh, I think uh, it's my role, and I believe it's my role to say in this panel also again and again, that the emergency that we are facing, the climate emergency we are facing, require all possible tools, all possible actors, and all possible finance, because the scale of the action that we uh, we need is uh, yeah it cannot be solved or cannot be handled by one or the other uh, uh, in uh, isolation and I, I i do believe as uh, other speakers said like the taxonomy is uh, one of these crucial uh, european tool uh, that will make this transition possible so the the, the issue here is uh, is uh, in a way like that we have it we welcome it but we do we we need to do with it what make it as effective, as transformative as possible. And I think we already heard from uh, the previous speakers some ideas on what's still needed, what's still missing. Uh, um, so I, I'm very uh, happy that we have this possibility and we have the opportunity in the next weeks and months to make that working. So when it comes to enabling technolog technologies, for me, the point here is not whether there is a role for enabling technologies in general, but which ones and uh, what is really at, at the stakes. So um, it has been already mentioned quickly, but I just wanted to repeat and remind to ourselves that the taxonomies provide us like with the framework, with the legal uh, uh, frame to include activities that can enable the transition. And uh, actually it includes three sets of activities. Um, those that are sustainable sui generis, that should be protected, empowered, and are at the core of the green transition. Those that are called transitional, 
uh, and we, the taxonomy defined those transitional uh, activities as activities for which there are not yet zero carbon alternatives. And finally, a third uh, set of activities that are called enable, enabling activities that are supportive of other sustainable activities. And I'm thinking here, for example, and that, uh, that has been mentioned already, all activities like the expansion of uh, electricity networks. Um, so in, in, to make it short, for me, the taxonomy has always embedded enabling technologies uh, in the core of its philosophy using a science-based approach. And I think this we should always keep in mind and always keep at the art of, uh, of uh, what, whatever we propose and we put forward. In our opinion, uh, um, the major problem started when the, uh, with the inclusion of gas in the youth taxonomy in the latest, in the latest complementary delegated act, according to which investments in gas should be considered environmental sustainable. And I have to really to say that because uh, here we need to be, I think, extremely clear uh, and honest with uh, also the public and with the citizens that are uh, eager to see this transition uh, to happen and to happen properly. Fossil gas is not an enabling technology for the energy transition in any shape or form. Uh, the taxonomy uh, defined, as we said, the transition activities as activities for which there are not yet clear energy alternatives. And this is not the case of gas, for which there are technological alternatives uh, that uh, are there and they exist. And I also wanted to highlight that it is not the case even for nuclear, uh, for which cleaner alternatives do already exist. Uh, that do not pose uh, a risk of nuclear waste management or accident, um, as as we we heard and we read a lot in the last in the last weeks, I think. Um, before moving to today reality, I just wanted to make a, a comment that further investments in fossil gas uh, are really uh, undermining. Uh, what has been mentioned, like uh, uh, one of the, the international agreements we have, and that we, we said that the taxonomy should be a, an instrument to uh, to make those agreements uh, uh, um, happening. And I I'm, I'm referring to European Green Deal and the Paris Agreement. Indeed, we should remind to ourselves that according to the European Commission on Impact Assessment gas consumption in the EU we need to decline by approximately 35 percent to reach 2030 targets and that according to the international energy agency electricity in the oecd countries must be 100 percent zero emission by 2035 so if we take a, such a science-based approach we can't include uh, or enable fossil gas as a, as a green uh, um, as a green investment and then i wanted to to comment on today's situation i think uh, in front of the sad and horrible developments that have been mentioned by Mal malte at the beginning of this panel uh, with the with the invasion uh, of ukraine ukraine uh, by russia the broader lessons we should take from this situation in this horrible world is the imperative to phase out our energy dependence on imported fossil fuels from Russia and from elsewhere. And I think there is a, a contradiction here, like with the European Commission um, uh, communication last week, the Repower Europe, where uh, even um, the pre President van der Leyen affirmed that we need to get rid of EU dependency on fossil fuels. And how then, I'm asking myself, how then is possible that the European Commission is still continuing uh, to uh, justify the original inclusion of gas in the taxonomy that was grounded on, uh, on the argument that of energy security uh, compared to what renewables uh, can uh, can do. So I, I'm, I'm sorry to be a little bit provo provocative here, but I think that's why uh, I, I'm invited. Uh, um, and I just wanted to summarize, maybe saying like that the largest risk we face at the moment with the taxonomy is, uh, uh, is really to incentivize um, uh, further gas investments and therefore not only threatening climate targets, 
but deepening and perpetuating our dependence on imported fossil gas and fossil fuels. So I just wanted to, uh, to make that clear. And I also wanted to protect that instrument, the EU taxonomy. We need that and we need to make the most of that in the next uh, uh, opportunities that are coming up. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Chiara, and for accepting the invitation, also for, for being a bit provocative. Uh, I think that's great for any discussion. We should hear all sides of the of, of, of the argument. Um, and as a member of the platform, I can can assure you that I've been in many of these discussions. Um, if I can somehow just reflecting on what you said a little bit, there was a lot on gas um, and the transitional activities. And that, from also a taxonomy and a legal point of view, is slightly different. I think you also hinted than that than the enabling technologies, right? And I think there is a is a of course a very political sensitive discussion around nuclear and gas. Uh, some will say rightly so. Uh, the platform has delivered it its opinion. Commission has now come with its proposal, and now it's for the co-legislator to to uh, reject or to uh, to adopt it, approve it. And that process is going on politically. Um, but but for today, I also heard you say on enabling technologies, it was actually not a case that they should be out. It was about doing it the right way, making sure that it's science-based, making sure that enabling technologies do, in fact, provide a substantial contribution, enabling contribution to a, to, to a sector that needs to transition. And that is, of course, hard. How do we get those requirements, the screening criteria that we call them, how do we get that right? But I think a point is just because it's, right, it's difficult to not lead to a conclusion, we shouldn't do it. We, 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 we have to find a way to, to ensure that finance is also going to these technologies. All right, thank you so much for now. And um, returning to, to Marcel and, and Melter, um, I'd like to get you back into to the conversation now. Um, I think I'll start with you, with you Marcel. Um, short term, but even more importantly, long term implications for European competitiveness, substantial sustainable finance. What is the implication, short term, but, but long term, more importantly, and the link to, to, to let's say, the business development of having innovative, uh, strong industrial base? How do we see the impact on, on the taxonomy and how do we get the, the sort of balance right between finance and conditions and, 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 and this, this, this driver, this acceleration of, of, of clean and sustainable and innovative uh, uh, engineering and technology companies in Europe? Uh, thanks, thanks, Andreas. Um, uh, let me start by by um, um, by stressing that um, for us now um, uh, a lot of the emphasis will be on implementation and uh, and getting uh, getting the 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 elements of uh, what we have from our uh, in our sustainable finance uh, agenda um, make them make them work. Um, provide guidance. Uh, make sure that uh, uh, that um, the uh, the market participants, both from the real economy and and from the financial side, can actually use the tools that that we are uh, that we are providing, uh, and can use them in a way that um, that avoids uh, unnecessary um, uh, red tape and 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 bureaucratic. Uh, Burden, so that that is um, uh, that is for us uh, of, of, of crucial importance, and then uh, and then secondly, uh, also looking at um, at how our sustainable finance uh, tools can uh, can support the transition. The transition um, uh, climate neutrality is not something that we can achieve in a day or by uh, pushing a button. Uh, it's a journey. It's a journey, and um, and um, uh, we we want uh, the sustainable finance framework to uh, to ensure that that finance is available uh, to the real economy uh, for um, for going on this uh, on this uh, on this journey. But then, when it comes to competitiveness, let me repeat that. The, the the taxonomy is not a mandatory list, uh, and that um, 
that investments in, in, in taxonomy-aligned activities are voluntary. So um, the uptake and the impact of the taxonomy is therefore, uh, I believe, uh, much harder to predict than, uh, than some of you have, have suggested. Here we are, um, uh, we will monitor the, the, um, the impact uh, uh, over time, but our current expectation is that uh, that the market will have um, a, a rather limited, uh, rather low percentage of um, of taxonomy alignment um, as the taxonomy starts being applied. Um, so we do not think that uh, um, that um, the impact will be enormous at this point, but rather moderate uh, at the beginning. And then um, uh, obviously it will, it will um, uh, increase uh, over time. And let me also say that, um, that um, our expectation is not that uh, the taxonomy will provide direct com competitive advantages to companies, um, uh, because the inclusion uh, of an activity in the taxonomy does not um, uh, uh, allocate or, or guarantee on its own um, a financial advantage uh, to uh, to an economic activity. That said, of course, we um, we expect that a company may strengthen its competitiveness um, uh, by transitioning uh, rapidly uh, towards climate neutrality and uh, uh, and environmental. Uh, sustainability um, um, but again we um, we want to provide guidance to impact uh, to impact investors the fact that a company does not have a taxonomy aligned activities doesn't does not mean that the company it, it does not allow for any any conclusions regarding a company's environmental performance um, and uh, or, or and or its uh, its ability to access finance. Um, there's no obligation for companies to be uh, to be or to become taxonomy um, aligned, and there's no obligation to um, to um, uh, uh, to invest in in, in taxonomy aligned um, uh, activities. Um, there will be also um, uh, also, after 2050, we expect lots of companies to have activities that are not significantly contributing to the fight against climate change. There will be plenty of um, of activities that are simply uh, that are simply neutral when it comes to, uh, uh, to 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 climate change, and we fully expect those companies to. Um, uh, to be able to um, to have access to finance, and, uh, and there's nothing in the markets that 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 would uh, that would um, suggest otherwise. These are the, those financing decisions uh, will remain entirely uh, with the um, um, with the um, investors, and um, and our expectation in the uh, in the shorter you know, shorter term is that um, that with our sustainable finance tools we will improve um, uh, clarity that will that will lower the um, uh, the research costs uh, for identifying and select selecting sustainable um, uh, investments um, uh, and and um, uh, 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 by being able to 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 use the guidance that um, that um, the um, the taxonomy and 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 other uh, uh, sustainable finance instruments will will provide. So maybe I I leave it at that. Yeah, perfect. perfect. But I think I, it's a very important point, and I think it's worth highlighting again. There is no obligations for investors to invest in taxonomy aligned activities. That, that's a key point. It is a voluntary tool. The obligation is on the reporting side, right, for the big companies. Um, 
and 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 the usability point you said your focus will be on an implementation now and i think talking from i think on behalf of the whole industry there is there is a need for for further further guidance we have the eligibility assessment now but when we go into the alignment assessment there's still a lot of questions so so, so i note that uh Melda, moving on to you, I think the same question here is your assessment of the impact of, of short-term, long-term competitiveness on, on European industry the same as we hear from the Commission? Um, your thoughts on that um, would be much welcome. Yeah, um, thanks. Uh, I'm happy to come back into the discussion. And, and obviously, short answer is um, no, it's, it's not exactly the same. Um, but let me let me sort of try and pull together a few uh, points that I heard in answering the question. First of all, just to confirm what you said, Andreas. Um, indeed, we are not talking about gasoline, and um, I understand that it's an extremely important discussion. I would say it has taken a, a sort of disproportionate amount of the spotlight. In fact, we see there is a much wider range of enabling technologies beyond the sort of gas and nuclear discussion, which are in arguably, in our view, much more important to get right, but which are not getting the same level of attention. And um, so wanted to make sure we are, you know, we are we are clear on, on, on this. And you know, none of us have, have mentioned gas and nuclear as something we are, you know, we are we are asking for here. Um, so the question, and I think Yara is right, of course, is what is enabled? And, and I understand that this is, um, you know, this is it, it not easy to give a straight sort of simple answer to this. If I look at a triple glazing window, clearly that contributes to energy savings. Should the industrial glue, which is used to put some of the insulation material on the glass in the triple glaze windows count as enabling? I don't know. I think you, can, you could argue about that. But all the different examples that were raised here by Kyle, by Olivier, by myself earlier, to me, seem like no brains. And I think without having a sort of simple clear cut um, principle, if you look at them individually, it should be obvious that these are required and that these need to get the full support of the framework. And so I listened, of course, very carefully to what Marcel said. Um, you know, it's not mandatory. I understand that on paper, it's not mandatory. It's not intended to give a financial advantage um, uh, and, and distort competition. I understand the argument. Um, I have some trouble um, following that through, though, because to me it seems if we do this, given the stakes, given we need to unlock 520 billion euros of extra investment by 2030 by the Commission's own um, uh, calculations, let's do it right. Let's not say, well, it's not mandatory and you know it's it's not supposed to give an advantage. You know, it may not be perfect, but let's just see. And you know, hopefully it, the fact that it's not perfect is not too much of a problem. To me, that I, I just find that not satisfying um, given how much energy we are all investing in getting this right and how much is that spent. So I would like to to come back to, to what Carl and, and Olivier also um, I think made very clear, which is for all practical intents and purposes, we do think this is the gold standard. We do see the market already behaving um, like this is and it will continue to be the gold standard. And so we need to get it right. And I think clearly there is a private capital and a public capital dimension to, to this. Um, and, and so I just want to say a couple of words, Andreas, on, on the two angles here. Um, first, public investments. And, and even though um, this may not be the primary focus of the taxonomy, it's clear that it's going to have an implication in terms of the way public capital is allocated. It's going to be used as a reference in other policy and, and, and investment projects. And so what we would like to get right in terms of the balance going forward is to make sure that we don't just cover the tip of the iceberg in the taxonomy with a best in class approach. In our assessment, only about 0.1% of the activities that should be covered are, um, you know, are going to be uh, are going to be in the scope. So very important in terms of public investments to, to get that right. The lion's share of all the investment which is going to be needed for our climate transition and our environmental transition, of course, is private capital. 
And so what I wanted to add to, to the other points that were already said was just to remind ourselves how the markets operate. And a lot of these technologies, which are still in their, in their baby shoes, you know, which are um, which needs to be rolled out massively. Some of them are still in the sort of um, in the R and I phase. The hurdle for investors to put money behind them is already high. Restaurants, uh, startup investors are notoriously risk averse. Um, let's not add to the risk perception of these um, investors in new emerging technologies and in startups by creating an additional obstacle with, them, with the sustainable finance taxonomy. Let's make sure that the risk perception that we give to these investors um, is supporting the uptake of those technologies. And I think that's um, is, is a very important um, um, effect that we are, we, are, we are currently not seeing. And for the SMEs, for the industry to get that balance right, um, I think this is, this is going to be very important going forward. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mel. The slightly different uh, take on this. Um, I hear you say opportunities also for strengthening competitiveness if we get it right. But a roadblock to go back to that previous term, it could also be a roadblock um, if we don't get it right. So, so urgency here. We're having really good discussion. Time is time is running quickly. Um, so, I just want to allow for time for for a quick round of of questions for for Carl and Chiara and for Olivier. Uh, and I think actually I'll, I would go along the same line of questions for all you three and maybe Carl, you can go first. Um, how, do we, how do we get the balance of, I think, making it easy, the taxonomy, an easy applicable tool? I mean, you hinted upon it before you have some concerns. So, <laughs> but, 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 but on the other side, there might, that some argument is that we can also, if we, if we don't set the right requirements and documentation levels, there is a risk of greenwashing. We need to ensure that what we label green is or sustainable is actually green and sustainable. Um, how do we get the right balance there? Um, what's your thought on that? Well, first of all, I'd like to mention, you know, success means impact. So uh, the logic doesn't have so much impact yet then it's no success. So if you want a sustainable finance and taxonomy um, to be a success, it has to have impact. So um, I couldn't agree more uh, to Malte, let's design it in a way that it really has impact. Otherwise, what are we here for? So if you look at the, at the, at the balance, you know what, what is trying to be done now is uh, to have a positive list, which is far too, too limited and excluding a lot of super, super important uh, technologies and products in order to make sure that there is no greenwashing. Um, and maybe we should change logic um, and make it a wide scope, even accepting greenwashing for a while, yeah, and then reducing a large positive list, maybe to a smaller positive list. Change the logic, because if we include a lot of right things now, we generate impact. And we may accept greenwashing for a certain period of time. Instead of avoiding impact, um, uh, in order to have no greenwashing at all. So I think we should, we should really change uh, that logic. And that's also important because there is an impact also um, besides the original target of taxonomy. Let's take risk cover uh, insurance. In Germany, it's, it's called uh, Hermes. You know, Hermes um, and, and other risk insurer, insurer, they use already taxonomy in a, in a test period to find out that the projects that they're going to cover the risks for are according to taxonomy, yes or no. And the result of this test phase so far is that almost no project is covered by the taxonomy. Now, um, if risk insurers in the EU would like to insure positive projects in the sense of the targets that are set, as per now, the taxonomy is not working. Um, and, and, and that's a fact. Um, so again, um, on the one hand, we should change the logic, accept greenwashing, make a wide scope, and then maybe reduce the scope instead of making a very, very small scope and having no impact. Um, that's number one. Um, and uh, number two is, let's also use existing well-working rules, example, given the eco-design uh, directive, which is already de defining what eco-design means, and it's an established um, legislation. That's it for the moment. I would love to discuss on the gas issue, uh, but, but uh, time uh, doesn't allow. Yeah, just I appreciate. I appreciate. Gas, gas is not a technology. Gas is not. A, it's just a fuel. 
you know, the technology we have to work on is H2 ready infrastructure. And then we might have gas as a fuel for a while, but it's H2 ready infrastructure we're talking about. And just mentioning it doesn't work without the enabling products from us. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I know we could continue for a long time, but we, time is short. So I appreciate the, the short answer here. I feel actually right now uh, we should we should go to bring it bring it back to you, Kiara, and hear your thoughts of, of this slightly, let's say, um, new new proposal coming from Carl of, of, of let's just getting finance out there. Your thoughts on that? Yes, uh, I mean, I will I will be very short, but I think that we need to probably this, I would say the main thing that it, this uh, debate is showing to me is that uh, the EU taxonomy to be functional needs to put the lens both of the investors and uh, uh, the lens of, of all of us that want to reach societal goals and societal transformation. So I think that could be the, the, the first criteria, like to ensure that we, we do we do bring about an impact and we do don't go into, into false solutions. And I would say that there are three main components to that. One being super clear that emissions intensive activities are not cannot be uh, labeled as green. Second, virtu um, to ensure in 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 incentives, as the Carl just said, to already existing alternatives and empowering, scaling up those and wide widen the 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 range of of those activities. And the third one, as I said earlier, like I think it's really about. Uh, um, Making sure that uh, uh, this labeling uh, around uh, uh, within the EU taxonomy is embraced not only by all the, um, the big industries, but the, by the all industrial sectors and by the wider public and civil society at large, because that's what we need to move forward. Perfect. Thank you very much. And Olivier, the same for you. How do we get the right balance? We need sustainable finance out there, but we also need to avoid greenwashing. What's the way forward here? Maybe I will be also very short, but I'd like to, to stress on the fact that taxonomy is, a, is key for us, key for big companies because of the interest of investors that you mentioned earlier, which means that in our relation to investors, this is something that we even if we are not legally obliged to invest, we have to practically. So for me, I have three, uh, three points for facilitating the, the application of the tax fund. First, and it reflects on the challenges that I was mentioning earlier. First, and in priority, we need to complete the climate taxonomy in order to reduce the distortion between different companies and improve on the credibility of the taxonomy. Second, we need to review the open criteria chapter. I mean, we are clear on the fact that we have to avoid greenwashing, but at the same time, we have propositions such as, for instance, extended disclosure instead of, let's say, this complicated best market alternative life cycle assessment and audited, uh, that would engage. This extended disclosure would be much more efficient insofar as it would engage the big company reputation against another, uh, the other solution, which is not very effective and, uh, and practically impossible to implement. Last point, uh, we are ready to participate. I think it's really key to consult uh, more the industry. I mean, our experts are available. Uh, they are they have ideas, we have options to be shared and to discuss in order to improve on the current limitation of the tax money. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we should, I, I would, it almost seems like we, we have planned this in advance, but it just so happens that a question has come in from one of the audience, which very nicely follow up on, on your, your, your remarks here, Olivier, and it's for, for the commission. Uh, Marcel, and I think we should end there before going back to a uh, re closing remark by uh, Maria Cavallo, who's still with us. But the question is, and I think we should let this be the, be the last question uh, for the panel debate. What will the Commission do to ensure that enabling technologies in the, in the upcoming Complementary Delegated Act on the climate part, but equally so actually on the Tax 04, includes 
and recognizes the role of enabling uh, technologies and activities. The floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, um, Andreas, and thank you for the uh, for the anonymous um, uh, uh, participant asking the question. Um, look, I think I think the the discussion here has has made it very clear um, uh, um, what role, what important role you know, uh, enabling technologies have to play. Um, and uh, that is something that um, that uh, we will bear in mind and, and take account of uh, when preparing the the second delegated um, uh, the, the second delegated act on the four environmental uh, criteria um, based, based on based on the input that we will get from. Uh, uh, from the platform um, and the platform's report, um, uh, I, I understand is imminent. So, um, so we will have this. We will have this input very soon, and then uh, we will um, get to work ourselves. Um, um, and um, we will um, we will see how how we can can uh, can address. Uh, a whole range of issues, but including also the role of, of enabling technologies in this delegated act. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I can I can confirm the report is imminent. You're going to have a lot of work. There's going to be an annex of more than 700 pages uh, for the commission to consider before turning it into a draft delegated act um, by the end of the summer. Thank you very much, all of you. I think it's been a super interesting uh, conversation we've had here today. Um, if I understand correctly, uh, Carveo should still be with us. If it's if you're still here, uh, please turn your camera. Do you hear us, Maria? And if so, uh, please uh, turn your camera up uh, on for for closing remarks. I think we just give it a few more seconds, Maria. If you hear us, uh, we are hoping that you can. I understand that you have you had to go back to the ITRA committee meeting, which is uh, going on right now. But 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 should be should be back to to conclude the uh, the webinar here. Um, if that is not the case, then I'll think I'll 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 sum up briefly. Um, as said, um, we. We, we, the Commission can expect the, 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 the recommendation by the platform by the end of the month, both on additional activities for the Climate Delegated Act, including some on enabling, but also on, on the four remaining environmental objectives. Um, my fear, of course, I can't reveal what's in it, but my fear is that we have not succeeded as a platform to adequately really recognize the role of enabling technologies for the four remaining environmental objectives. And I think that is. That 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 is not that's that's not good enough to be if I speak on on my own behalf and not on the part of the platform. So there is some work for the commission to uh, to engage in there. Um, I also hope for the commission that this debate today has 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 given you some input, food for thoughts for the further work. And of course, as Ockley, we'd be happy to to follow up once the report by the platform, the recommendations are made public. Um, and last but not least, I should say to all the participants today, thank you so much for, for taking part in today's program. We will follow up uh, with an email to all of you who attended uh, with a link for the video um, and also with, uh, with, with, an, with an article on enabling technologies from, from Ockelim. And with that, I'll, I'll conclude the program. Thank you very much and have a great day, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.